Any couples in? Yeah. Not that many. How many how many of you live together? Live together couples? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, me and my girlfriend are sort of starting to get towards that phase. She's talked about moving in. And I've said to her, let's let's talk about it after lockdown. I tell you, let's talk about it after summer. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> it's nothing wrong with her, she's perfect, but it's me. Ever since I moved out of my dad's house when I was 22, you know, I've always lived on my own. I've had girlfriends, but they've never to the point where they've moved in, or I've never had a flatmate or a lodger renting a room, so I've always had my own space. So I'm not sure if I'm quite ready yet to, to give up wanking in the living room. <laughs> Couple of nostalgic sighs from the men in the room this evening. I've already given up the bathroom. That's already her turf. I went in to have a shower the other day. I pulled Cousin It out of the drain. There's hair everywhere. And where there's not hair, there's all these tiny lotions and potions and bottles of things I haven't got a fucking clue what any of them do. I'm a man. I have one bottle. One bottle. It does hair, body, face, teeth, salad dressing, everything. <laughs> But they're fucking everywhere and they all start across the bath and then run across the bath to the ledge to over the top of the toilet and now they're advancing across the windowsill like a tiny plastic <laughs> platoon. I'm being pushed out of my own bathroom by the surplus stock of the body shop. <laughs> but the thing is, I could give up the bathroom. I can concede that. I can give up the mid-afternoon living room wank. I could give it all up. But there is one thing that has to change before we can live together. Oh, guys, she's a snorer. Oh, she snores. Does anyone here sleep with a snorer? Yeah, well, I don't. I lie awake next to a snorer. <laughs> it's she's so little but so loud. I don't even know where the noise is coming from. And if I get five minutes of respite where she shuts up, the bloody dog starts snoring. And she'll wake up and shout at the dog. It's not the dog, it's you! She has complaints about me as well, of course. You know, she, she complains that, that I never listen to her or something. <laughs> she was screaming at me the other day, you're not listening to me, are you? Which I thought was a weird way to start a conversation. <laughs> what I like to do is I like to bring home gifts that my PT clients have given me and give them to her as if it were from me which is fantastic. But the weird thing is, me and my clients have a sort of love-hate relationship where they love the results, but they hate every agonizing second they have to spend with me. So I get these really like weirdly aggressive gifts. Like I got a box of Ferrero Rochers, no wrapping paper, no card, just a sticky note. Rose is red, violets are blue, you're a cunt, these are for you. <laughs> now I never thought I was the C word myself, although I have very recently bought myself a BMW, and so as it turns out, <laughs> there's ample evidence to support that theory now. I, I never used to drive like an asshole, but now I've got something called sports mode, which means I can be one and escape. <laughs> You'll know it's mine, it's the one outside parked in the disabled bay, fuck them. <laughs> it's a great car, I had a problem with it the other day though, a funny light come up on the dashboard, and you know how expensive these kinds of things can be to fix. So I took it to the garage to find out you know, what this light was. It turns out it was the indicator. <laughs> How about the car four months? Never used them. I just drive it round Swindon all day. Just drive it up and down the streets of Swindon. I just thought I'd show them what they might have if they actually went to work. <laughs> oh, fucking ooh! I didn't know so many of you were from Swindon. How'd you get here? How'd you get this far up the M6 without your tag beeping? 